one or two auditions in, I got yours for uh, the Dem- Devil Democrats. And the first thing I thought was, this is Shakespearean. <laughs> and uh, I, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, this is absolutely perfect. And, right. then, I, and then I didn't, even, I didn't look for this here. I got two other ones, too. Let's do all three of these books. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you brought it right to life. Revelation 20, verses 1 to 3. Then I saw an angel descending from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the abyss and a huge chain. He sees the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him up for a thousand years. The angel then threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it so that he could not deceive the nations until the one thousand years were finished. Afterwards, he must be released for a brief period of time. Tom Fish, how are you? Good. Great to finally meet you, because we've done... You too, same. We've done three audiobooks together, uh, Mm -hmm. three three pretty... um, I I I want to get the right phrase. Three exciting audio books, three important audio books, and for some people, I would say three controversial audio books. But you probably yeah, like sure. it that way. Well, yeah, kind of, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it skirts the middle of all of that, you know. Yeah, and whereabouts are you? Where do I live? Where are you? Where are we talking to you right now? I'm in, I'm in Michigan. In How Michigan, where? Whereabouts? In, in Detroit? I'm, in, I'm, I'm down River Detroit right now, yeah. Down River Detroit. Now I've been I've been kinda to Detroit. It was a I think it was a Sunday. I was I went to a radio convention in Chicago and then we took a road trip straight afterwards. So we headed north and we got to Detroit. I found the Motown studio, but it was closed that day. All right. And and but that's Detroit, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then, that's right. That's Detroit proper, yeah. Yeah. And then we went to Dearborn and we went to mm-hmm. the Henry Ford. Yeah, Dearborn just a little, little north of me. I'm like the river goes right through Detroit and so as you follow the river down I like you can see Detroit up the river and then we're down and there's a few towns down river. Yeah. That's where we are. And then, um, then we crossed the we crossed the bridge and went into Canada, right? It's yeah, just south that bridge is where I'm at. Yeah, um, Detroit that that area has been uh, has been quite influential, hasn't it? I mean, not only the motor industry, but the Motown music. Mm-hmm. MC Five, yeah. the band came from there. I interviewed Susie yeah. Quattro. She's from there. Really? Uh, she lives in the UK, obviously. So. Detroit has done a lot for the world. It really has. There's a there's a good movie out there. It's a documentary. It's called Searching for Sugar Man. Yes, it, that's a great about, film. He's a, and he's from Detroit. That you know, is he? Yeah, Sixto uh, Rodriguez. Yeah, he's from Detroit. Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a hell of a movie, isn't it? South African film. I watched it on a plane yeah. once, and as soon yeah. as I got home, I said to my wife, I said, hey, you've got to watch, the, we've got to download, you've got to watch this film. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Just watch it, because there's, right. there's a hell of a twist in it. Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's from that way, too. Wow. Okay, did you grow up in that area? Yeah, just north of here. I, I grew up in Saginaw, which is 100 miles north. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, the first thing is that this, the first book is out now. The second book is out too, isn't it? Is the second book I, I out? I think all three of them are out. All three of are them are out now. All three of them are out now. I think, I think yeah. this morning only two of them were out. All three of them are out. Uh-huh. So the books are by Patriot Church. What is Patriot Church? Patriot Church is, is what um, I began. Uh, I, along the way, I've kind of started a couple of churches and, um, you know, I, I never kind of been far removed from the political slash biblical arena. And so it, now with everything going on that's going on in the world right now, it just seemed like the Patriot Church kind of dug its heels into a certain genre or a certain part of the movement. Right. So you've got you've got the word Patriot, which is connected to the right of politics in the USA. Mm-hmm. 
Although mm-hmm. neither side should own that word, but it does seem that the 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 it's it's the red uh, uh, color yeah, that well, is that this associated. It's like that one quote that was in the book, and um, where Trump was in uh, at the New World Order with our WF in in, in um, wherever I can draw a blank right now, but when he said. The future doesn't belong to globalists. Globalists. The future belongs to the patriots. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of yeah. That can encompass both right and left. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it does seem to tend to lean towards the right. So right. I think it's fair to be said yeah. on your behalf right. that that's where your politics is. Um, yeah. So and then of course we've got church, which is a Christian church, and you've you've in this you, you meld the two, the politics and the Christianity in the two, and that's that's right. what Patriot Church is about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's hard to separate those two. Okay, okay, and why is that? Why is it hard to separate the two there for you? Because I I, I see it as it's no longer right against left or conservative, Republican or whatever. It's it's now it's good and evil. And, uh, you know, you're either on one, one of those sides or the other. And I think if we see it in our political movement, we see it in uh, nationally, we see it globally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the book interprets messages from the Bible, in particular one big message. And we're talking about stuff that's in the book of Daniel that reappears in, in Revelation. Right. How did you work that out? Was it you that worked that out, worked out what the message is, or did it come from other people I've been working doing, it? I've, no, no, I've been doing that for probably since the late 90s. I think I've written I've written books back then yeah. on it, which are more extensive and, and more, you know, more, more detailed. Um, but as I got these re- three recent books were kind of, I wanted to have a, a voice politically here on, on what's going on right now, so I kind of brought those back to life, and that's why I did three of them because they, like, like I told you at one point, I, I really wanted to do one book, but I got all this leftover stuff. I'm like a, a, a cook that you know, baking a pie, and our baker is baking a pie, and I got all this stuff left over, so I need to make two more pies, and that's yeah. kind of how I got, you know, that's how I come, but. But to that biblical side, I've, I've been doing that for my whole life, probably. So this is an interpretation that, that you found in there that, you know, for centuries has been missed. And, and I don't know how specific you want to be I don't, uh, with spoilers, but there is, there is a certain definition of something, and it's the, it's the number of the beast, the 666, that you think that, that most uh, Christian teachers or people who teach what's in the Bible and the interpretations have got it completely wrong, and they've identified the wrong thing with that number. Well, uh, I think, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of beliefs of what 666 comes from and, and how it's derived. But it, it all leads back. I mean, it, if you look at some of the definitions, if they're not so far off the beaten path, I think everybody, um, researchers and everybody kind of globally for years, for, for probably centuries, have identified the Roman Empire as the beast. I mean, it, it goes back before Jesus' time. It's currently going on. And it has all its factions, all its heads, all its all its horns, all its kingdoms. So I, I don't think that's a mystery to you, but I think a lot of researchers identify that. What's confusing is, you know, people have like written off the Roman Empire currently as, well, that just happened, something happened a long time ago, not realizing it's front and center in politics right now, you know. And so, so I think that's part of what I wanted to talk about mostly. So those who haven't read the audio book, read the book or listened to the audio book, hmm. 666 refers not to Satan, which a lot of people believe and the mark of Satan. Right. It, it, it refers to, in the biblical context, the Roman Empire. But what you're yeah. saying is that that empire is alive and well and, and has it, just it reinvented and rebranded itself through the centuries. 
Yes. Well, yeah, it, it started it started prior to Jesus' birth and it um you know it died its mortal wound in four seventy six AD and it was resurrected as the Holy Roman Empire, which Revelation thirteen talks about. Mm-hmm. And that and that has moved forward. And I guess that's what people don't 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 recognize readily recognize is that after it's moved forward, um, you know the 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 it's moved right to to the present time. It, the Holy Roman Empire was the first Reich. Hitler's Nazi Germany was the third Reich, and we're living in the time of the fourth Reich right now, where you just see it rise its head, and that's that's what I that was probably the main thing I wanted to point out in the whole yeah in all of it yeah. So so what does it mean? Why do you think that we were given? these prophecies in Revelation that relate as well to the book of Daniel and how it's clever how you say that the two need to be read together and then it does all right. kind of it fits then there's, there's stuff in Daniel that on its own is a bit vague and stuff in Revelation which is on its own is a bit vague and you've put them together and it makes everything a lot clearer right why why do you think we as humans living in this time right now and I say like the last couple of hundred years why why do you think we were given that information in the bible what can we do why have we got this info from from god why is a good question i think it's just to i I think it's to show us to give us some kind of light some kind of understanding if we take the initiative to look for it we we can derive its understanding and, and and not not be confused by all this stuff that's going on around us in the world. I mean, th- 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 go back, imagine like during Nazi Germany, during uh, World War II. I mean, the world was at war. And we had, you know, like for the most part, no one had a real compass of what was going on day to day. Yet, if you apply all that in the Bible to it, you could see that we were coming out of that and heading to something else. And, mm. um, that something else is upon us. I mean, I think that something else is where we're at now. Because hardly anybody would argue that the Third Reich, Nazi, the Nazis of Germany, I mean, they were evil. There's like no question, yep. Yep. you know, no question. Yep. Why should we be thinking that the current um, Biden Democrats and you mentioned Obama as well, why there's Mm. evil there too. Because it doesn't seem, from the outside, it doesn't seem like it's on anywhere near the same scale as the Nazis. Yeah. But, yeah, because there, you know, you have, I mean, you know, and I know that this part's probably controversial, but you got Biden out there as a front man who can't think his way through a sentence. (laughs) And you got somebody pulling the strings in, in, you know, in the background. And, for the for the sole purpose of um, subduing the population and turning us all into a centralized government, which at some point is going to happen. I mean, it's biblical that it's going to happen at some point. Yeah, will it happen? You know, this election or will it happen two elections down the road. But at some point, that centralized government is going to be present. Yeah, when Jesus yeah. returns. Yeah, and Book of Revelation predicts that. So the timing um, is still still not known. But what will happen when that takes place? Because people have sp- spoken about the rapture for many years. You have a right. slightly different take on, on what will happen. Well, I mean, that's, that's part of the whole thing is that, you know, Jesus' thrust isn't, I mean, the, the secret rapture is... is contrived it, 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 that that there's no rapture in the in the, in the bible um you can see in some of the passages that i cite in there that jesus is coming and the government will be on his shoulders you know he is and i, and I only put a few of the passages in this particular democrats book but um but in, in my other books I, I talk a little bit more extensively about it but well we can talk about all three books because i think all three books lead on from one another it's just that this one was released first so that was the one i oh, contacted yeah, that, you that, about yeah, but yeah, we can talk right. about all three yeah so yeah yeah 
um, well, basically, you know, you, there's more passages in the other books. That, yeah. And in the, there's some in this one, too, that talk about Jesus coming with the government on his shoulders. And his purpose is to, the second coming, is to overthrow these current governments and set up his own government for a thousand years. Yeah. And, and, and during that time, to subdue Satan for a thousand years so we can no longer deceive the nations. And that's yeah. real clear. And so so he's put away for a thousand years. And while this whole other government system's going on, but at the end of that thousand years, he's released again to have a war against the current government. And that's I know this sounds like I'm like off the off the top of my head saying stuff, but that's very biblical. Um, you know, you can see it where it says he not to be the Satan's not to be released until the end of the thousand years. Uh, and then when he does come up out of the abyss, he gathers the the um, the, the the rebellious left, I guess, and and wars against Jesus' government, and then, and then is is finally conquered, you know, for all eternity. It's it's interesting because when we were doing the book, you mentioned there that the that the Bible doesn't say anything about the rapture, and and a lot of Christians believe that that's the way it's going to happen. There's something else that you also said in the book that I'd never even thought about is the Roman Catholic Church talking about this idea of purgatory. And right. there's nothing in the Bible about that either. It's just there made up a, by the Catholic Church. It, it, well, it is. And, and then I put that, I put the actual doctrine of purgatory or the actual, um, it was, it was, it was, the, it was the, the, the declaration of this is why we're going to believe in purgatory. Yeah. And I mean, really, if you read that, it's, it's you know, what is it? I mean, in, in essence, it says, we believe it because we want to believe it. And this is what we're going to make our parishioners believe. But don't get any arguments with the uneducated multitude. Just, like, don't talk about it with them. You know, I mean, really, it, it's just, it's bizarre. And that's kind of a good sampling of some of those other doctrines across the board. Just, yeah. We're going to believe it because we feel like believing it and so be it but it's almost sinister like it's in there by the catholic church to just control people really right. you know and a, and a lot of that it seemed it seemed that way well yeah that's what that was about and, and, and all the doctrine is and that's you know and uh, you know when I, I ain't talked too much about this but you know like the roman empire died it, it's mortal wound in 476 it was resurrected by the and, Holy and the roman reason why empire. you say mortal wound is because that exact phrase is used in the book of revelation there was a mortal right, wound right, right, yeah yeah right yeah. yeah it's used in the revelation and uh and it, it talks about this wound and then the wound is healed and, and you know by the by the by the new beast that speaks like a, or looks like a lamb and speaks like a dragon I mean, you know, like I, like I said, how, how much more obvious can it be that it's the Holy Roman Empire? And um, that you know, that kind of portrays itself as holy and is anything but, you know, yeah. not to mention, you know, I, we don't even get to the idolatry and all the Babylon mystery religion and all the stuff it brought forth. But, um, you know, just uh, the, the, you know, the whole use of the church in its government, yeah. the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah. So is the Catholic Church part of this new world order as well, then? Because um, that the, that's, the, that's the closest link you can see to the Roman Empire, because it's linked directly to the Holy Roman Empire. The headquarters is still in Rome. And yeah. um, is, is, is there a link there, or is this purely the political um, um, factions? There's, a, there's been, over the years, kind of a... Uh, a divided philosophy on that. One philosophy is that when the book of Revelation talks about the woman who rides the beast, the the woman is, you know, she's the mother of all harlots. That is harlots being churches and, and you know, and um, the, the woman who rides the beast, you know, that's been thought of as being the Catholic church. But I've yeah. heard other philosophies say that's Christianity in general. That's that okay. false Christianity in general that's still not really following Christian principles, but are still attached to Babylon's religion. Yeah. And so um, either or, what what you end up with is uh, there, you know, like the Roman Empire was definitely in, in bed with the church. And um, you can see that in 
in Hitler when yeah. he's professed himself to be this Catholic and this, you know, and he's like kind of like. And you have all these quotes in the church. book too. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, if Jesus was to return today with the current system as it is, what would happen to the Democratic Party at that time? If it, if this was the time, like within the next couple of weeks, before the next election, anyway. Oh, uh, hold, hold on! Hey, I'll get housekeeping coming in. Go ahead and just take that. I'll, I'll you know. Okay, I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> what if Jesus came back within before the next U.S. election? Right. What would happen to the current administration? If Jesus came back, he would turn yeah. the whole thing on its ear. I think you take all those Batman characters that are in the New World Order, like like Klaus Schwab, the guy that's right out of Central Casting, he looks like uh, Mister Freeze or somebody from the, from Batman, the villain, or out of um, <laughs> James Bond or some. I mean, that guy, he they would turn that on its ear for sure. I mean, you think there's nothing holy about that? There's nothing. You know, and, and and everyone who's attached to him, and that's I put that in there. You know, oh, I stand with Ukraine, or I stand with the New World Order, or whatever. I mean, those people are all in. You know, well, one of the things it says in there, you know, in, in Revelation is who can make war with the beast. I mean, it's it's big. It's in every aspect of our lives, just yeah. about. Yeah. Wow. And where would that once again, hypothetically, if Jesus was to return? before the next election what would happen with donald trump he probably tossed on his ear too i mean i i, I really think that, i think that, really well i mean i i, I mean i you know i don't i mean because i wouldn't exalt him and say well he's he's um you know hand uh, hands off of him he's like teflon don i mean if jesus returns i think we're all kind of looking at uh you know uh, uh What's the word? I think we're all looking at you know at scrutiny. None of us are free of of, of that. We're not all scot free, but but politically speaking, man, I mean, think of what's going on politically now. There'd be pedophilia and transgender, this and that, and um, I mean things that you know and I know are absolutely against biblical principle. And I think you know those are rooted out first. Yeah, you know, and 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 I'm, and I'm not trying to divide it and say, well, I'm holier than thou, and so you guys are all screwed. And not not me. What I'm saying is that this whole political landscape, geopolitical, economical landscape, would be, you know, Jesus is going to come and rule it with for a thousand years. He's going to definitely change it as as we know it. Yeah. So that that would in effect be a, a whole different world order, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But it wouldn't be based on, you know, bribes and and uh, murders and I mean, look at what's going on—nuclear you know, like threats or whatever. I mean, it would be. And look who the, look who you know if you in, in, in Revelation twenty, you know the the dead rise, and our our. Live and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. I mean, that's the administration. The people who are being resurrected and, um, you know, reigning with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a fascinating book. How long did it take you to write all three of them when you when you sat down to uh, get it all together? Well, a long time ago, I um. <laughs> one of the first books I did was about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky way back in the. 90s and um because i did that i got two other book contracts uh with that and i did um i did most of the writing then because i wrote two books that were related then i um those were out of print and uh when i sat down to write these i just kind of like looked at what i'd already written and then um i put bits and pieces together and then i had um I took a, I was like a two week vacation with a long list of stuff to get done. I mean, millions of things to get done. And I got just those four books done, you know, and which it would seem like a lot of work, but I had a list that was a mile long. And they've got these the books. 
These three have got some pretty provocative titles. Start with the first one, The Devil and the Democrats. The titles of the other two, in the correct order, which is the, the next one that follows on? 666? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the 666 Beast is Upon Us. I think that was the yeah. second one. And the yeah. other one is the, um, um, uh, the, the Beast Revealed 666. Right. And, and each time it just it lay, it puts more layers onto the, uh, onto yeah. the argument or, or, or what it is that, that these books are about. Each book then layers even more on it with, with more quotes. You meant because there's quotes, yeah, from the Catholic Church, lots of quotes from the Bible, and, uh, and also even uh, Mr. Hitler uh, get, or Herr Hitler right. gets, a, uh, gets a quote in there too. Uh, pretty scary well, we, what we, he actually said. Regarding those Bible quotes, when um, when you were narrating it, I was very mindful of the fact that, you know, here you're going over these quotes like two or three times because they're in, the, you know, somewhere in each book. Yeah. And I was, um, I was like, I was, I was feeling for you. I was thinking, you just, you know, interchange them if you want because, uh, you know, I mean, some of these are. Uh, they're, they're they're tedious to go through. I would think three oh, times. Oh, oh, I, I I would disagree. I didn't. I, I don't. I, I find and and I've done it with other books. When I when I read um, Bible quotes, I actually really enjoy it because the, there's a there's a power to the to the way they're written. They're almost you know, from an acting point of view, of course, not from a spiritual point of view, huh? but they're almost Shakespearean. In the way that they, you, you know, have to deliver them, you know, to make you know, them to, to feel the power of them, and that, that's a good point. And at some point, we they talk about your narration of it because uh, when I, you know, because you know how the process works, you put your books up and you get these interviews uh, or these um, auditions, auditions, right? Yeah. yeah. About one or two auditions in, I got yours for uh, the Dem Devil Democrats, and. The first thing I thought was, this is Shakespearean. <laughs> and, uh, I, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, this is absolutely perfect. And, then I, and then I didn't, I didn't look for this here. I got two other ones, too. Let's do all three of these books. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you brought it right to life. And, and, that's yeah, what it feels like because you've got to give it the gravitas you know it's mm -hmm. not just i mean i mean w when it's stuff that's god has said or or but even when you know quotes from daniel and king uh, nebuchadnezzar and all that yeah. they 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 really are to make them work you can't just you can't just read them you've got to right. you've got to put some feeling into them like shakespearean actors do yeah and yeah. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the the process. I'm glad you picked up on that, and you actually picked it up as Shakespearean because that's what I was doing yeah. with them, just to give them the power that, that that they need. Yeah, you know, I'm like one of the first. When I I did another book, I did I did four of them. I did three here, and I had another one that was kind of like a personal one. I needed a more of a um a kind of toned down voice for it, mm -hmm. and I actually put in a Shakespeare line from Macbeth. Um, you know, like tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, you know, creeps in this petty pace from day to day. And it, but it was, but it, it had no life to it because it, it did, the type of narration was real flat because I needed that. Right. But I, I could see. imagine you doing that, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, time has been a walking shell, a poor player, you know, that one, that, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I deliberately put just a touch of echo on the on the quotes yeah. so that you knew the difference between the um between the actual narration of of the information and the and the actual quote so it was obvious because yeah. i even put the echo on when the catholic church i don't know if i did it with hitler um but i definitely did it with the catholic church i don't know if you did it with that but you know, but you know because i was super excited once you started narrating this and i was having everybody listen to these 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 clips I was well, listening to this, I mean, this book should be great. And I'm, I'm li having listened to it. And that's what everyone picked up on is like, oh, I love the way you use that echo for that, the Bible right. quote. You right. know, yeah, that guy was, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't wait till the book was out. I had like all my friends, like, look, listen, you know, this is great. This is going to be good. I'm excited about it. Cause I don't get very excited about some of my writings. I like, they kind of fall flat to me. They, they're there, but you know, I mean, they're not, um, I mean, they, you know, they're, they are what they are, but you, you brought these three to life, and I really, really, really appreciate that. I'm so, I'm so glad of that, Tom. Uh, and the other thing I liked, you, you did a, you mentioned, we mentioned it earlier in this chat about uh, there's a quote from Donald Trump, 
And so I Googled the the quote and found oh, yeah. a YouTube video of it. It, it was at a, yeah. I think it might've been at the UN. Um, yeah. And, and I, and I managed to lift it and put it in because anything like that, where it's political at the UN or at a press conference or whatever, it's in the public domain. You can use it. It's not like, um, if it's, if he'd said it, you know, specifically mm. to one person for one thing you can use. It. So it was great to put that in there as well. I really enjoyed that just to give it an extra dimension as well. And more credibility rather than me reading what Trump said. Here's Trump saying it, you know, so it's, it's real. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that that was a perfect touch because that's the, why I was referring to that, that speech when he pretty much gave the middle finger to the New World Order or to the WF and said, the future does not belong to the globalists, the future belongs to the patriots. And yeah. that is, that's, I mean, that's absolutely why, why, why he got indicted again. What, like today, I think, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's he's, like he's they're like after him. him because he's not going with it along with his globalism, and the globalism is flat out say, Satanism. Wow, wow. And who are these books aimed at then? Uh that's a good question. I think I, I would like people to. I would. What I what I'd like the takeaway to be is to, to to see that this stuff that we're experiencing right now, COVID, COVID, all that COVID stuff, and then, you know, this fraudulent elections and, and everything that's going on didn't just rear its head in the last couple of years. This is a, a culmination of what's been going on for 2,000 years or more. It's just a, a different face on it. Um, you know, because one of the things that says, uh, you know, the beast has given his power through Satan. You know, the, 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 Satan has given us all of its authority. Well, that beast isn't just something that's in our future. It's been going on prior to Jesus' time, all the way through the ages in every facet, through through uh, Napoleon, through Hitler, um, you know, the Third Reich. And right now, and you know, like right now we can see it happening and and we got such perfect characters, like I said, so like right out of central casting, presenting all of this stuff. I mean, you couldn't have done it better to get Klaus Schwab and George Soros and these people that are, I mean, like they are, you know, you couldn't have Batman, you know, the Riddler, Joker, Klaus Schwab, you know, I mean, they're all part of that. That's so how do, we, how do we find out more about Patriot Church? I want to put more books out. Um, and Have I, you got a I, website? I, really want to, I don't. I, um, okay, right. I, 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 I don't, but I, I mean, I got different, different sites, but um, I like to put some of the books up on the sites. Uh, but I, I think that's a good question. I, I really wanted to, at some point, it would be great to have a group of people who, um, who's, who would study the Bible and then also give to some of the causes like hunger and uh, uh, poverty or like in the capacity where I work down the river, people need utility bills and, you know, things, things help with those types of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try like to like, because, you know, behind every church nowadays is some kind of um, donation thing, you know, and, and if people are like, I don't want, it would be great if people could come to like a, little, like a church meeting, right, and bring like cans of food and put them over a box somewhere to give to the to the public, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah, a, yeah. it's not, a, I get, my, my point is, it's more about studying the Bible and it's not a money-making scheme or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, what I'll do is I'll put, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put links to not only... The Devil and the Democrats, but the other two books as well. So you can link directly to them on Amazon right, cool. and you can download them from there. And the, the links will be direct to the audio books, but you'll be, once you follow the link, if you want to get the book to read, you want to get the ebook and download that, well, you, you'll be on Amazon. You just click one, click back, and it'll yeah. it'll make sure that you've got the that version of it. So uh, check that out. Those links will be in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. Well, what's next for you, Tom, and uh, Patriot Church? What's the next big project then? Um, I, I got some other, uh, you know, some books I want to write. I, I got, I got, um, 
I got some ones that are unrelated to Patriot Church and, and some um, and the politics and religion. I'm going to kind of deviate from those. They'll probably have a little sprinkling of biblical stuff in there. And then I'm going to come back to these, um, and I'll probably do you know another group of three or four of them that are uh, related. I, I would like to do some things that are not just the same types of things, the same types of quotes, but other other concepts, other principles. All right. Well, we'll have to keep our eyes out for that. In the meantime, thank you so much for choosing me as your narrator for this hey, series thank of you. fascinating hey, books. Up, they were just a joy to do and uh, just intriguing. And, uh, and I was getting deeper and deeper into it as we got as we got further and further into them by the third book, you know, it was really, uh, I was really quite deep into this, you know, it's, uh, it's really good stuff. So thank you very much, Tom. And, uh, thank you. Pl please stay safe and, uh, and continue to be spreading the word. Thanks. You too. Thank you for, uh, bringing it to life.